as part of our continued efforts to reach the African and other ethnic communities in the United Kingdom with greater impacts and create the platform to hear your silent and unheard views in this hugely green community in the United Kingdom, our channel, Ben TV, presents to you another live current affairs television program. Our focus on the program is to review and discuss issues around the diaspora community in the UK. The program offers you that unrestricted voice on issues affecting you in the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Another business segment of Dialogue in Diaspora, 2 to 3 p.m. every Monday. But guess what? You know you can be part of the program. Just send us an email at bentelevisionuk at gmail.com. Dialogue in Diaspora, your voice, your opinion on our TV. Thank you for joining us on the program Voice coming to you from Ben Television. My name is Tundi Alabi. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the program today. The program is Voice, where we take a look at issues um, in the UK, especially around legal matters. More importantly, as they affect you, or either as a student, as a resident, as a visitor in the United Kingdom. On the show today, we'll be taking a look at key important issue lately it's no longer news that britain will be leaving the european union and it's no longer news that um the government under prime minister theresa may has been having a frosty relationship with the european commission and the fear of hard brexit is 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 is, is on the increase Although the European Commission had insisted that part of the discussion that will be on the table will be the security and the safety, including the immigration status of European uh, Union members living in the United Kingdom. But the UK government has not committed itself to anything. But going by the different talks, exchanges between these two parties, it does seem one cannot be really sure of what is going to happen to EEA residents in the United Kingdom, including their dependents. So on the program today, we'll be taking a look at what does the future hold for EEA residents in the UK, including their dependents. And my guest on the show today is Kinsley Oyemenim. Kinsley Oyemenim is a principal partner and head of firm at Casey Law Chamber Solicitors here in the United Kingdom, London. Kingsley, thank you for joining us on the, thank you on the show today. Thank you. I mean, Kingsley, uh, from, from, from my intro, if one looks at the way this Brexit talk is going, it's looking very uncertain. There's no clarification. The European Union is saying the interest of EU members in UK will be considered first, but UK is not committing itself to anything. Yeah. You, as a solicitor, what are your thoughts? What, what 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 are your thoughts? In this I think program? I think it's a it's it's a big worry for um, not just U, uh, European Union residents who are here, not th not only those who have permanent residence, but they also have concerns. Uh, those who haven't even applied for their permanent residence yet, because don't forget, normally uh, permanent residence you have to hit the five year threshold before you then apply. So there are concerns for those who haven't hit that five year residency yet. Uh, there are those who are also concerned who still have their permanent residence but they haven't naturalized. There's also a major concern for their family members and dependents, husbands, uh, wives. children, wives. Um, in fact, we know that they have, we have close to almost, if not over 3 million U, um, European Union residents who reside in the UK. Uh, it's a term of worry for them. Uh, the, just like you said, the UK government should naturally be able to, to say, okay, fine, this is the position that we've taken in this matter, i.e. we will either give every individual who's coming at it from a particular period now, um, before the Brexit or uh, before the, uh, the, 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 the trigger of Article 50, their, their permanent residency, or assure them naturalization to a greater extent, or, you know, come up with some sort of positive response um, but I feel that it's more of a negotiation tool, um, and they don't want to give the cards away. Uh, although, I mean, they've, they've been pressure on Theresa May to do so. Uh, I know that, that, that this was tabled before the uh, House of Commons for a vote to be, to be put, uh, put forward uh, on, on some sort of assurance by, by the Theresa May's government. And I think out of 500 uh, individuals you had, there's about, there's about 200 and something votes for. And, and um, basically, that, 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 that didn't happen. 
Uh, so we are where we are presently today. today. So uh, but w w would you be saying that the non-commitment of Theresa May, the future of EU citizens in the UK, yes. is going to be like a bargaining chip that the government, we don't know which government is going to come in, but if we go by the poll, yeah. we'll probably say the Theresa May government is going to be used as a bargaining chip. Put that on the table and say, look, okay, this is the conditions. Of course, the European Commission has said the interest of the EU citizens in the UK will be considered first. Yes. Yes. Would 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 the government, the coming government, let us assume Mr. Rizami's government, mm -hmm. yield to consider this interest as important as the EU? I, I think is holding it? as much as I have explained what the present uh, May government's position mm -hmm. is or what it seems to be, um, the the one of the questions that they've got to ask themselves before they reach a decision to the negative is what would happen to British citizens who also reside in the European Union countries. Because it it would, if it does get nasty, and I think from what we've seen so far, it may get nasty. It's frosty. Mm -hmm. If it gets nasty and Britain says, well, we, we're not going to uh, uh, give them that right that you've demanded, then cons consequently, uh, you're going to have more of a, uh, you know, a, a, a backlash from other European countries. And the, the EU would take a similar position. So. Whether Britain is going to win if they come negative with a decision is something that I'm sure I'm, sure, I'm not sure they want to risk. I think my, my view is that I think at some point they would have to concede. Um, it may be in their terms, but I think it, it would ha have to be a term that may assure uh, the residency of those who are presently here or those who, have been, who are entitled to, to reside in the UK. Because not everybody is entitled to reside. There are those who have actually haven't taken the steps to apply uh, to regular rights as it may be. Okay, now let, let's quickly look at the, what, what does the future hold for the, the, the family and dependents, wives, okay. husbands of okay. EA nationals? Well, if, if the future of those who are EA nationals is, is not that assured at present to this, so you can imagine how... What well, the future is going to be for, <laughs> exactly. like, for their dependents. Exactly. It's, it's, it is difficult to say. Mm. Um, it, when I say it's difficult to say, it is not as it is not as as sure as that of the the the, 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 the EA nationals in, in, in question. Because don't forget, the EA nationals their rights are, are protected under the European Union law, um, and obviously you have the directives there that that obviously see to um, how they they can settle and how their family members can remain here with them. It it may be the case that the European Union and I'm 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 I'm, I'm not sure how much of that the European Union has has come forward to say so far. I know they talked about the um, um, year, year residents who are in Britain, but their family, their family members and dependents, their rights are also derived from the directives of the European Union. Um, it's very, at, at this very point, it's uncertain today. It's uncertain as to what may happen. Uh, but, but I think the, the only advice I would, I think 50 has been triggered already as we stand. So mm -hmm. we have two years, or those who, or the, the European Union citizens who are in the UK here, have two years to take steps to regularize or apply for the relevant uh, residency papers. So my advice to them would be obviously be, whatever you need to do, get it done before the two years expiration period. Except, uh, except if the UK decides to- What about on their dependents? Will they, they would, have they, the same opportunity to regularize? They would, they would have, they would have. The, the, the only issue that we have now presently, there, there's the, the greater scrutiny of those applications. Before it used to be quite straightforward. Uh, you apply, for whether it's permanent residency, uh, it's it's fairly quickly considered and granted. Uh, but presently, because of that relationship, mm. you, there's more onus now um, on certain applicants who are EA residents, like those who are self-employed, like those who are students, um, to, to now demonstrate uh, by providing more additional documentations uh, to for their for their application to be considered. And if, if, if it's not provided, usually it's refused. I mean, I've seen quite... Um, an yeah, there has been reports refused. that a number of applications from the EA nationals to for res UK resident permits, a number of applications have yes. been refused yes, yes. by the Home Office. They, has, they, have, they have been, um, I think, since this Brexit. Yeah, since this Brexit. There has been quite a lot of refusals. Let, let's, let's, let's quickly look at what happens normally when you are a 
a foreigner married to uh, a EA national yeah. under their rights of <coughs> rights to family life um, you are granted the UK grants to five years yes. uh, residency yes what happens if with Brexit uh, the year national yet to regularize ourselves or himself. You're yet to meet the threshold, complete the, the threshold of your five initial five years. Yeah. What happens to you? Well, you're holding a five years. <laughs> you're holding a five years residency based on your marriage to a year national in yeah. the UK. Yeah. Um, you're dependent of a year national. He or she hasn't regularized himself or herself. You've not completed your five years initial mm -hmm. threshold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happens to you? Well, what does it, where does it they, 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 they are family members, and I think it depends on where they're coming from. They're those who are coming from outside the UK. So you might have individuals who are... Yeah, for the, South that's, America, that's what I'm saying, foreigners, uh, people uh, yes. coming from outside the UK exactly. and the EA, in, not in exactly. EA, so, EU. So I think, I think what happens to them, normally when you apply, hmm. and if you meet the, the criteria, the criteria that are, that are set Which out, application? Well, yeah, the first five the years? The first five years. The okay. first five years. Yes. Okay. Granted. Because that's, that's obviously, that's your, that's your initial residency yeah. permit application. Now, if, if that is granted, then you're giving five years. Five years. Okay. Now... It depends on where you are at that relationship. Usually, if it's with, let's say, let's say couples who are married, mm. if for any reason in that relationship the marriage breaks down before the okay, five years, so you've got you did not issue your five years, and then within say three years before the, before the five years the marriage breaks down. Now, your partner is not there. The EA national is not there to support your application for 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 for, for permanent indefinite for indefinite exactly, leave. which is yes for indefinite leave. Now, what then do you fall back on? You fall back on what is called the retained right of residency, okay. okay? Which is now you can you have to make an application based on the strength of your own uh, stay in the country. But for you to qualify for that retained right of residence, you then need to demonstrate that up until the date of first of all, you have to be, you have to get it. You have to, your marriage has to last over one year um and then the divorce has to uh, be filed and you have to obtain a decree nicer at least after three years or three years of marriage so if it's below three years of marriage you might not be able to assign to retain right of residence okay although there are other special categories who can take advantage of that now if you have to show that upon the date of the decree absolute you uh, your partner who or your ex-partner was asserting their treaty right mm. You have to demonstrate that. You also have to show that you yourself are also in employment. Okay. Now, also you have to provide a comprehensive uh, medical insurance. Those are one of the some of the main, most uh, important criteria that you need to demonstrate. Now, if you're not able to demonstrate that your partner, how do you point, demonstrate a partner, he well, <laughs> uh, national? Who you can't find again. Well, this is the difficult out it's, of divorce. <laughs> she's gone her own way, or he's gone his own way. This is this is uh, this is. This is this is this is this is a burden that most of the all applicants who apply under the retained right of residence have always had, because like you said, the, your partner has left you. In most instances, they take their things and they're off, mm -hmm. or you're not in the same um, family home as they are. Okay, so finding the evidence is difficult, but unfortunately, the burden is yours to bear. You have to provide those evidence. If you don't have evidence, them, such as evidence, usually would be first of all, you need to be able to provide. Um, if, if, if your, uh, if your expert now was working, so you need to provide pay slips, a up letter of until the up until three you, or the time you've, you got, you got your absolute, the, don't, don't uh, forget, the, 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 let me just clarify this. You only, you can only apply for the permanent residence at the five year period. At the five years. Period. Okay. But you have to show by the third year that you, the marriage still subsists. The marriage does not subsist anymore and therefore okay. you have a decree absolute. Okay. So if your divorce was after three years. So let's say let's say that you had a divorce say tenth of April last um tenth of April this year and you're applying today for your application. You need to demonstrate from the dates of that marriage up until tenth of April two thousand and seventeen. Okay? Yeah. That your partner was assessing their treaty rights. Now essence of treaty rights could be either the person is a student, uh they are actively seeking employment, but obviously you have to show so that they're signing on at the job center whilst they're doing that. You have to show that they're self-employed or that they're employed, okay? Now, so evidence to demonstrate any of those categories has to be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, okay. then you would fall into almost a refusal, except where there's exceptional circumstances. So you have sometimes when you have children of the marriage. So let's say there's a court order that obviously gives you a right to a child 
of that marriage. Now that child, by virtue of the fact that he is born of an EEA citizen parent, parent, one of the parents, would have and also either 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 is an uh, is an EEA citizen and therefore or British you, exactly or British and therefore you can then rely on that um, on that. But where there's no where, where there's there no, is exactly there is no child or there yes. are no children yes. involved. Then it, it you have to demonstrate every bit. Okay, family. where you hit the five years initial threshold, you yes. complete it. Yes. But you can't find your wife again. Or you can't find your husband again. <laughs> well, look, if you... If and you, then you've not divorced. <laughs> no, if you... If you while, the, the, while the marriage subsists within that period of five years, you have been able to push through till the end of your yes. initial five yes. years. But along the line, your wife has bolted. She's disappeared. She just walked away from home. Well, you've it, not divorced. Yeah. There's no formal papa to say you're divorced. Yes. but you cannot find your wife to support um, your evidence mm -hmm. or indefinite leave application. She, you can't find passport. You can't find ID. You can't find anything yeah. because she's gone. What do you do? <laughs> then you've got <laughs> Brexit staring at you. <laughs> you got Brexit staring at you. Exactly. It's it's look. It's a, it's it's a difficult one. Um, at the end of the five years, like I said, you ought to be able to apply for permanent residence. Yeah. Okay. If you're with the, the instances where either because the, the marriage has broken down because of domestic violence issues. Mm. Uh, now, usually what most of the applicants will tell them to do is look, if there's domestic violence issues and you feel that at the end of the five years, it might not, your partner will not be there. Make sure that you collate all the evidence that you need. Police reports, uh, crime reference numbers. Uh, anything to point that there was a mistake, but most 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 of the applicants who are there, they've they've uh, rehoused them and moved them to safe centers by the local authority. Those are evidence that we can put they can put together to use. Now those are those that face of domestic violence. So those who don't face domestic violence, obviously need to be able to show that they the marriage is subsistent. That's 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 one. Uh, but naturally, the 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 the, the EA partner ought to be. The person also supporting because you're still independent. Don't forget. Yeah. So when they, when they're not there to support you and you're not able to provide those evidence, it is difficult. Uh, fact of the matter is that you you haven't at that point in question uh, satisfied the criteria, and naturally, what should happen, except where the exceptional section. Supposing you, my viewers watching this program, um, are dependents of EA nationals, yeah. um, a man or a woman married to them exercising their treaty rights yeah. in the uk got five years and they are at the point of finishing their five years um but um they can't find the wife again mm -hmm. or the, the husband again yeah and one night the lady just disappears from home with all her documents wakes up and then flees or the man yeah. and then here is the poor guy or the poor lady yes. ending nearly the end of the initial first five years yes. and then we've got brushes staring at him or at her end of his. What does, what would you say he or she should do? <laughs> it, it's, I, I think, I think we've, we've briefly looked at that, but I, I think it's, it's a difficult one today. The, the, the regulations, the directives are, the, the directives are clear on what should apply and what should naturally apply in that instance is that this person if they were to apply for their uh, um, ILR which is indefinitely to remain they need to show they're still dependent on the EU national they need to show that the EU national is, is still exercising their treaty life right where they f where they're not able to do so based on the scenario that you've painted then it may be the case that they, they could make the application but make it and have the home office as that it be considered discretionary and, and advance, you know, how would I put it? Advance uh, 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 submissions uh, that, are, that, that, are, um, uh, that, that are compassionate enough. Okay, now there have been instances where that has happened and they have issued. There have been instances where um, they have not issued, mm. but it's really down to the individual um, um, cases and the facts around them, really. Is it really a hopeless situation? For the man, it it is it is it is difficult, especially where it's not hopeless. It is it is difficult. I mean, they, they, I tell you a typical case that that we that we handled recently is a case where the up the husband had joined the wife who was an Indonesian national. He was he was issued initially two years, okay. 
instead of giving the normal five years and you have a lot of applications that way so instead of going to give you five years they will give you one year or two years okay which it shouldn't be so in that relationship on this in the seventh year the wife the second year yeah the seventh the seventh year seven the seventh year now the, f the first two years was issued and when he towards the end of the two years he applied again to extend they gave him five years so in all he had seven seven years so he decided to up to come to us at the end of the five years okay at that point in time the wife had left they had a child together she, she's packed her things and she's moved back to um um uh, Base, yeah, where yeah, exactly. she's come from. he couldn't get hold of her um so he, he made the application and that was refused before he came to us so we had to deal with the issue of the appeal but what we were able to demonstrate when we went to court was that the first two years should count towards the five years so we we, we, we got the matter adjourned and then we went back and he was able to locate documentations leading up to the fifth year of the seventh year because naturally the, the wife should have the be the, the AA citizen having resided here for five years mm. automatically has indefinite leave to remain mm. okay and at the point in question we're able to argue that because he, he was able to demonstrate in the fifth year as opposed that to the seventh year the, the wife yeah, exactly. was exercising that exactly. treaty right because leave. the problem that he had was that he was losing he was missing two years two years mm. to show within the second five years that was given to him mm. so we, we, because we were able to demonstrate that he was granted his indefinite leave and that was the end of it but not everybody is so lucky okay so but the it, situation is not that it's difficult it's not hopeless as long as the ea dependent is able to to show that the um the EA national he or she's depending on yes. was exercising yes he's or her treaty right. up to the fifth year of That's the marriage correct, or yes. at most the third year of the marriage yes where there's a de de decree absolute where there's a decree, decree absolute. absolute correct yes so, so if if she left on the f fourth year mm -hmm. so the man or the woman should begin the process of a divorce immediately if you left yes yes it's advisable that if, if the if your relationship break breaks down say at the fourth year mm. it's always wise that you start the process immediately because then the longer you leave it that, that means that when you when you're ready to, to then apply for your your indefinite leave to remain you have more evidence that you need to provide mm. and obviously you're already having difficulties and you would have greater difficulty if you didn't allow allow it to extend so it's always best to start the process almost immediately so uh, if, if if you're watching this program you are in that situation you're married to uh ea national who has been exercising his or her treaty rights in the united kingdom but for one reason or the other um, out of the fear of brexit he or she has decided to return to his or her own country and you're worried that at the end of your additional five years you might be having some trouble well of course um it might be a very difficult situation but it is not outrightly hopeless what you need to do is to get in touch with the solicitor or speak to a citizen's advice bureau or better still you can talk to kingsley or yemeni of casey law chamber solicitors you're going to find the address and the phone number on the screen where you can call them they are based here in london uh, you can get better advice and he's just said the one of the quickest thing you can do is to start a, a process of divorce so that by the time you will be ready to file in your five years you have enough information and documentation to support your your papers that the marriage actually broke down but before it broke down uh the EA national was a success in his or treaty rights in the united kingdom and this is probably how far we can go on the program today and here we've spoken about what does the future hold for EA Nash residents in the uk and their dependents as we talk about Brexit. but before we go let me quickly take on back kingsley on one more important issue kingsley we are what about a situation where they are not officially married okay no documentation yeah but they've got children for uh, between between them between themselves, themselves. Yes. now usually they there were um applications that could be made which is uh two years uh, uh where you can demonstrate that you've lived with the individual for two years in a relationship that's akin to marriage so it has to be a relationship that is akin to marriage you mm -hmm. have to show that so you're living with them um for two for two years so you can you can apply mm -hmm. for the five-year resident card now where there's a child involved obviously um you can always always either you use that either you use the family means where you have as a father of the child itself um 
you have residency right to, uh, to that uh, contact, contact right to that child and resident right to that child. You can then obviously apply on the strength um, of that um, of that um, contact order um, and the fact that you have a, you have a child who is there. But that is if your, your partner is not willing to assist you. Mm. But if your partner is there, then it makes it a lot easier. But where you have a child, obviously the child obviously triggers the child being present there uh, triggers Article Eight rights which is the family right that you would normally have. So where, where it fails uh, at the first instance of the application, you can then use Article 8 um, to, to, to apply. Mm -hmm. And that usually tends to um, um, save the day. So what, what, what are our key areas of specialization of uh, cases or chambers in the city? We, we um, undertake work on um, commercial immigration. So you have Tier 1 um, um, uh, sponsors, those who are trying to bring in um, you know, skilled workers from overseas, uh, those who want to bring in skilled workers from within the UK here. Um, we also specialize in um, the individual immigration law, like EU law, um, anything to do with immigration work, we, we specialize in. We also undertake criminal work. Uh, we do commercial contracts, um, uh, leases, we do housing, we have a legal contract in crime and housing, um, and also we, we we have a department that deals with intellectual property uh, and performance law. Fantastic. All right. That has been Kinsley Oyeminem. Kinsley Oyeminem. He is a senior partner at head, senior partner and head at Casey Law Chamber Solicitors here in London. If you need more information, get in touch with Kinsley Oyeminem on the phone number on your screen. It's been a pleasure. Uh, stay out of trouble. My name is Tony Alabi. Uh, if you do need more information, get a solicitor, speak to a citizen advice bureau, or get in touch with Kinsley at Casey Law Chamber Solicitors. Until we come your way again, enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. As part of our continued efforts to reach the African and other ethnic communities in the United Kingdom with greater impacts and create a platform to hear your silent and unheard views in this hugely green community in the United Kingdom, our channel, Ben TV, presents to you another live current affairs television program. Our focus on the program is to review and discuss issues around the diaspora community in the UK. The program offers you that unrestricted voice on issues affecting you in the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Another business segment of Dialogue in Diaspora, 2 to 3 p.m. every Monday. But guess what? You know you can be part of the program. Just send us an email at bentelevisionuk at gmail.com. Dialogue in Diaspora, your voice, your opinion on our TV.